Hey everybody, this is example number four for mechanics and materials covering column buckling. The problem statement that we have is the 14 feet wooden rectangular column shown below is fixed at the bottom and free at the top. Assuming that yielding does not occur, find the critical buckling load. Modulus of elasticity for the wood that we're assuming is equal to 1600 KSI. And here's our figure of our, uh, of our wooden rectangular column. It's fixed at the bottom, free at the top. The unbraced length is 14 feet. And to the left, we have the cross section. It's two inches by four inches. The two inch dimension, we call it B. The four inch dimension, we label it as H. And here's the X and Y axis for the local axes for the cross section. First thing we're gonna do is calculate the section properties. And the moment of inertia about the X axis is equal to BH cubed over 12. And this comes out to be 10.67 inches to the fourth power. 10.67 inches to the fourth power. And this spreadsheet uh, is uh, available at our website at engineeringexamples.net. The moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to hb cubed over 12. So that's 2.67. The effective length factor k for both axes is equal to 2.0 because this is a fixed and free. So when you have fixed and free boundary condition, this is the effective length factor is equal to 2.0. And the unbraced length for both axes is equal to 14 feet. And now we can calculate the critical buckling load using the Euler buckling formula. It's equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia divided by the effective length squared. So pi squared times 1600 KSI times uh, the moment of inertia. So in our case, we're going to use the least moment of inertia, which will give us the smallest critical buckling load. And this is IY, 2.67. And divided by the effective length, effective length. Uh, so if the K is equal to 2.0 times the effect, unbraced length of 14 feet, convert it into inches squared. So the critical buckling load is equal to uh, 0 0.37 kips. And in the spreadsheet, I calculated the critical buckling load about the x and y axis separately and then chose the smallest value. But in the calculation, I just, I, just went I just used one calculation because the effective length is the same for both axes. So we can just automatically uh, input the smallest moment of inertia value and get the critical buckling load. So it's equal to 0 0.37 kips. And this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel and visit our website at engineeringexamples.net. Thanks.